Statistics and Excel, Confidence Intervals, Binomial Distribution Survey Example. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get realistic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay, because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one. Because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise so you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. The practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, as you can see, is blank. We'll construct this from a blank worksheet practicing our Excel tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building, looking at confidence intervals, but this time with a binomial type situation, testing a sample, which we will get back to shortly. But first, similarities to recent example problems. We're looking at a large population. We want to find information about that population. We can't test every item within the population. It's just too large. Therefore, our strategy as always, take a sample hoping that we can apply the findings from the sample to the larger population two strategies that we might use to do that one being confidence intervals the second being hypothesis testing hypothesis testing lending itself to situations where we think we know what that middle point is and want to test it such as if we have that number of how many peanuts on average are in a box of peanuts and we wanted to test that you can imagine making a graph around the hypothesized number, looking at our sample and seeing if the result of the sample is farther enough away for us to reject the original hypothesis. Confidence intervals, on the other hand, lend themselves to situations where we don't know what the middle point is. That's what we're trying to find. Therefore, the mean or middle point that we get from the sample is what you can imagine as the middle point in our graph which we will then construct a confidence interval around in some way, shape, or form, which you could still do using hypothesis testing method by basically asking, for example, if this was my middle point, what if the unknown population middle point was over here? Would the result I got be far enough away for me to reject the original hypothesis? And you can give that hypothesis over and over again until you get a range, which would basically be kind of like peak to peak, and the range would be kind of in the middle. But it would be easier if we can start at the middle point here, construct some kind of bell curve around it, which we're used to doing, either using a normal distribution or T distribution, whichever be applicable based in part on whether or not we know the standard deviation of the population and how large of a sample uh, that we have. And so that's the strategy that we will take a look at here. So we're, we're now looking at the confidence intervals with a binomial situation. So you will recall that bi means two, meaning every result of any particular test only has two outcomes, unlike many other tests, like measuring heights, measuring weights, having a survey one through 10. If you have a survey of one through 10, the result could be anything from one through 10 per question. Here, however, the survey is something like yes or no. Did you like it or did you not like it? In which case you only have the two results. You can imagine a similar situation in voting. Are you going to vote for A or B? Or asking the question, are you going to vote for A or not vote for A? For example, a coin flip situation, similar scenario. Now, one of the crucial points will be 
this formula because you will recall that we would like to apply the central limit theorem concept, which would mean that instead of us looking at the actual population, which might not be bell-shaped and for sure is not bell-shaped when we're talking about a binomial situation because the graph is just going to have two points to it. So the idea is that we would like to conceptualize that we are taking the data that's going to be the the average of every possible combo combination of samples that we're looking at, which we will approximate with a formula when we're thinking about the standard deviation calculation, this formula being slightly different for a binomial situation as for a non-binomial situation, but the general concept being the same. Okay, second tab, uh, we're going to have our uh, our pre-formatted cells. So if you want to use this tab and do less Excel formatting, you can, but we're going to do it from scratch here, starting with our baseline, just like we're building a song. We got to lay down the beat, lay down the bass. Here we go. Right click it on this one. We're going to say uh, format the cells currency and where negative numbers will be bracketed and read. No dollar sign to start off with. No decimals to start off with. Okay. I'm going to go to the home tab, make it bold. You don't need to do that, but I like to do that uh, because I think it's easier to see in a screencast. Put in the title. It's just going to be the confidence, confidence intervals. Hopefully I spell this right. Pro if I spell things wrong, I'm sorry. Proportions binomial. So pro by proportions, because the, the, we can think of the basically the the uh, uh, average as being like a proportion of yes or no's in our case. Binomial, something like that. Binomial, is that right? Binomial, I don't know. So let's go here and say this is going to be. You get the idea. This is going to be black and white. Okay, I'm just going to copy and paste the formula. And I'm going to copy and paste this little bit right here. I know that's kind of cheating because I said we're starting from scratch. But if you want to type in that formula, you could just go to the insert tab and you can go to the equation. I would use the ink formula thing here. And then you can like type it in. And then if you mess things up, like it's typing it up there, then you can circle it and change it if you want. So that's really a cool thing. And then this, all I did was insert a text box. So if you want that in there, you can add a text box and type in uh, our simple scenario here where we're going to say that there's a sample of people that are asked, did you like the streaming TV show or not? Because we have all these streaming services. You're aware of all the different streaming services. But I, I get the feeling that people are not happy with them lately because it doesn't seem like they're making good stuff. So I'm going to imagine in our scenario, People are unhappy with it, except Crunchyroll, which is like, I think it's like an, the anime streaming service is still good. But I'm going to imagine like this is all the other ones that don't, they don't seem like they're doing good anymore. I had high hopes for them and I feel disappointed. But so that's going to be the scenario. We're going to make this skinnier and then we're going to put our percentages. Now, this is the behind the scenes data. So once again, this is the stuff we know as the problem creators here but in universe uh, the people don't know this because that's why they're taking the sample so we're going to say in the actual population we're going to build this so we have an understanding of the behind the scenes so when people when we ask people this if they were really going to be honest and they weren't paid shills then this these are like the real numbers that we know about so people do you like did you like the streaming service TV show? Almost all of them, or you can ask for the whole service. People are like 20, I think it's like, this is my guess, you know, but I have a pretty good sense for it. I'm gonna say in our scenario, it's 20% no, or 20% yes. And then the people that don't like it is 80%. So 80% no and 20% and yes. And then the total is gonna be the sum of these two. And then we're gonna say, okay, home tab, number group, percentified. Now note, just in reality, this is an interest. These are really int actually interesting scenarios because you know that any kind of statistic that you're in, you also have to say, how are they skewing the statistics in real life, right? So if the numbers don't look right, you're going to be asking, well, did they ask the survey question correctly? Uh, you know, what, what, you know, what, 
and, and so on and so forth with those kind of questions. But we're just kind of breaking out the numbers right now. So I'm going to make a population of 5,000. So let's say the we're just imagine the population is 5,000 for the purposes of our practice problem because we can simulate 5,000. So I'm going to say this is going to be 20% times 5,000 and this is going to be 80% times 5,000. So then I'm going to sum up the count. And so this equals the sum. And so now I'm going to imagine, well, how can I get like a population of 5,000 that will be randomly broken out between about, or in this case, exactly 20% yes and 20% no. And so, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, so this is what I'm going to do to, to simulate our data. So I'm going to go, okay, let's make this black, white, and center it. Let's make this blue and bordered, home tab, font group. We'll make this blue. If you don't have that blue, it's down here. It's a beautiful blue, beautiful blue. There we go. We're going to make that uh, bordered. Okay. This is all, we know how to do all this stuff. I know this like the back of my hand. And I can tell the back of my hand, even if it's moving as fast as a piston. I know what's going on around here. We're going to go home tab, formula, format painter. We'll put that over here. Okay, so let's do this. So then we're going to say this will be the count. This will be the sample and rand. And so, so let's then say our count is going to be 5,000. We're going to do 5,000 of these. So let's go one, two. And I should probably do this with a sequence because there's 5,000. So I could copy these down, but that's a lot. So, so this time what I'll do is maybe use a sequence formula equals, and this will be, let's do a sequence. Oh man, what did I do there? I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at my cheat sheet, which doesn't have a sequence in it. All right. I'll just do it this way equals. I know what I'm doing. I don't need a cheat sheet sequence. The number of rows we want is going to be 5,000 and then columns, just one column comma. The start value is going to be number one. The number of steps we want is going to be 5,000. So I think that should do it. Right. The number of the number, uh, the start point. Hold on a sec. I don't need that last bit. Start point is one. I'm not going to put the step. All right, there it is. Okay, and then I say control shift down. So there's the 5000 numbers. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste yes and no's. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal. Yes. And I'll just say this equals the one above it. And I'm going to copy that down to 1000. So copy that down 1000. And this is a little bit of a tedious way to do it. But I'll copy that down to 1000 to, 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 right there. Okay. And then this one is going to equal 1001 is going to be the no. And then we'll go into that one. Let's say F4 on the keyboard. I'll make it absolute. And then I'll just go on and double click it. So it'll go down all the way down to the 5000. All right. All right. So now let's go back on up. So there they are. Now, if I wanted to make those random, one way we could do that is I could make a random uh, generation over here equals rand and just let it calculate random numbers, adding decimals, decimalizing it, copying it down. And then I could shuffle these. Now to do that, if you use this method, you'd have to copy and paste this whole column, copy and paste it. So it's one, two, three, just the values. Otherwise, the formulas are going to mess it up. Uh, but we're, what we'll do is we'll just do when we pull the when we pull the responses over, I'll do an index function, which will pull randomly between from this column, which should give us random numbers, even though this is kind of like in order, right? So those are the two ways we might think about doing that. So let's go ahead or two. There's probably more ways to do that. But those are the two ways that I've thought about doing that right now. So home tab, let's go to the font group. Let's make this black, white. Let's center it. Let's select this whole thing. This should be red, actually, because this is stuff that we know. That's what my red is. So I'm going to go here, font group. Let's make it red because that means that we know it. But in universe, they don't know it yet. 
So we know what the real truth is around here, Hollywood. We know what the real numbers are, but they get, they're going to keep trying to lie to us. So I'm going to say, okay, now let's select these double click. Okay. So now let's imagine, let's make these a little smaller. This needs to be skinnier. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the home tab, uh, clipboard format, paint that on over to the K column. And this is going to be our sample responses. So we now want to be taking random numbers in here. So I'm going to use an index. This is going to be index function. And so I'm going to choose this column with the yeses and nos, control shift down, control backspace. And then I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard because I want to be able to copy that down. That's dollar sign before all of the numbers and letters, comma. And then I want to randomly pick those numbers. So I'm going to put a random formula between. Make sure it's between and not that array thing. Bottom is going to be one comma. The top is going to be 5,000. Now that's in rows. So the row, this is number one. This is not number one. This is number one of the rows to 5,000. The last row is row number 5,000. Close it up. And that should give us a random number uh, generated here. And so I want to do, how many of those do I want to do? I want to do like, I had 1,100 in my example. Let's actually pull this to the right and let's put a count here. And I could see how many times I want to count this down. Let's just do a thousand. I'm going to say this is going to be one and two. And then I'm going to select those two, count them down to a thousand, which I'll just do this way instead of using a sequence function because a thousand is not that far. It sounds like a lot, but when you just copy it down like this and you're using the Excel and it gives you that little number thing to help you out, then it's not that bad. See, that didn't take that long. And then I can go bold and then uh, let's center this and then I could just copy this down, double click the fill handle button and boom, there it is. So it gives us our random numbers. Now this in universe, they actually know this. So I'm going to make this part blue now, right click. We're going to format the cells, format cells, and I'm going to make this one a lion. What is going on here? Accounting. I wanted to make this wait currency negative numbers no dollar sign uh no decimals okay and then i also want to make it blue and bordered okay so there's that all right so now let's let's now i'm going to select this bit so now i'm going to make a skinny n column by selecting the skinny k column go into the home tab format paint and make that skinny n all right, so now let's put our data here. So we're going to say little n represents the sample size. So let's count our sample now. So I'm going to count these. I put a thousand here. I already know that, but I'm going to calculate it by saying count. Noting here that if I want to count this column because they're not numbers, I have to say count A, which I think A stands for the alphabet. So it's counting something other than numbers. Control shift down, control backspace and enter. So we have a thousand of the population and then we have the responses of yes and then no those are the possible responses and so we're going to say that this will be uh, the yeses and nos by the way yes is going to stand for uh, p so the p is going to be the yeses and then this is going to be then the one minus p one minus p are in essence the proportion of no's so if i think about this we're going to say the yeses that we came out to how am i going to calculate this equals count and then i want to say count if so count if the range this sample range control shift down control backspace comma what's the criteria if it says yes i want you to count it and enter so that gives us 190 now I could say, well, if there's 190 yeses and N was a thousand, the no's must be, it keeps on changing, but 784 versus 216. But I don't like to do that because I want to give a double check. So I'm going to do count again, count if, <clears throat> tab, the range is the same, control shift down, control backspace, and then comma, 
This time count if there's a no and enter. And then I should be able to double check by putting the total sample, which is gonna be N once again, but giving us our double check equals the sum tab. Uh, oh, well, that's not tab. What'd you do? Let's just double click it here and then add those up. That should add up to a thousand. Now, if I look at the percent, then the percent is going to be equal to the 199 over a thousand. Then we need to percentify to recognize and decimalize it for a little bit more detail. And then I could say, okay, then I could take the, the one minus T, which are the nose percentized. 795 divided by the 1000, which is going to keep changing, percentify to recognize, add some decimals for detail. And then we'll sum it up equals the sum. And that should add up to 100 percentify. There we have it. So we can then underline this. Okay, so that means this is basically our average because if we only have two results, and we think of the P as the one we're focused in on, what are the average number of yeses versus no 20% yeses which means by definition there must be 79 about you know percent losses so that we add up to that 100% for the total okay so given that then we could say that that's going to be our percent yeses and nos so then we can do our little tests here which is like is n times p greater than uh, greater than five. And that'll give us a test to see whether or not the central limit theorem could be used because this will tend towards a bell shape if it's greater than five. So we're just taking N, which is 1000 times P, which I'm looking at P at this 23% as a percent, P percent. And then we're gonna say that's gonna be greater than, than five, so we're good. And then I could do a similar test saying, well, is N times the one minus p greater than five so now i could do that test and say okay is n which is 1000 times the one minus p in percent format over here greater than five it is we could do a little check figure for our test which would just be like is that greater than five and it'll give us a true or false true is that greater than five true and we could do a little a little fancy formatting over here home tab style group format and then say if this is equal to uh, uh, true make it green make it green and so we could just basically let's just leave it at that we could say if it's not true we can make it red or something but we'll just leave it at that and then we have a confidence interval. So let's say we have now our confidence interval, which we're just gonna assume as has been our normal case, the 0.95, which is kind of like the default percentify. Let's percentify to recognize, and you could just leave it as a decimal. That means that A, uh, which is the uh, significance level is gonna be equal to one minus the 95, which is the 5%. So that's gonna be the bit on the tails. So we're thinking we want in our interval, 95% uh, in the middle, where's my graph, don't they? Meaning we want our 95% like the orange here, 5% would be in the tails. And if we divided that by two, each tail would have five divided by two, 2.5% 2 in the tails. Remembering we can measure this whole thing with either X's in terms of X's or Z's, which later you can think about as T's, or we've thought about T's as well, but we're looking at Z's right now with a normal distribution. So now we've got A over two, which is gonna be each end, five divided by two, is gonna be that percentify 2.5. And then the upper Z then, so the Z on the upper, we can then calculate and say, okay, let's do, if, if we know what this uh, point is up there, we can do, this is gonna be equal to the norm dot s dot, uh, dot inverse. And so now we just need the probability, which is going to be, I want, if I pick up this bit, it's gonna give us a negative uh, 1.96 
right? And what I want is it to be positive. So I'm gonna go back into it and say this, I wanna take one minus, which will give me the positive, you know, 1.96, which would be like that upper kind of, we're thinking basically like uh, up to this side, right? Instead of like this side measured in Z's, which are in essence measuring in standard deviations. Okay, so then I can go, okay, let me give, give me my standard error. Now this is the thing that's kind of like the standard deviation, not of the population, not of the sample, but the, the imagined standard deviation as though we had every combination of samples of whatever sample size, which we chose of 1000 out of the population, which we're imagining is 5000, which we're approximating with this formula, uh, just this part of the formula, this is the range we're looking at, basically P times one minus P over N is our calculation, which is a little bit different from if it was not a binomial situation. So we're gonna say this is gonna be the square root, the square root tab of P. So P is up here, that's gonna be in percents times one minus P, which is gonna be this one. And then we're gonna take that, it's gonna do that first, so that's good. So I'm gonna say divided by then N, which is the sample here close that up and that should be good all right let's go back on it adding decimalizing it decimalized all right now let's calculate our margin of error so now we're going to say margin of error now you will recall that the that basically uh the z's are are giving us the upper limits in terms of z's Right, so we got the range around the middle point, but I also want to see it in terms of X's. So to do that, I want to, I want to get that, that difference. So the Z gives us our range in basically standard deviations and the standard error in essence in terms of X's. So I'm going to multiply this out. Almost two standard deviations times the standard error is going to be giving us, if we decimalize it, there we have it, boom, boom. So 0 0.024 and so on and so forth. And now we can calculate our range, lower limit. So we're looking at our range now in terms of X's. So the middle point is gonna be equal to the, uh, the middle point is like our mean, which is P. And then we're going to be minusing this margin of error to get that bit of it. Let's decimalize that. Do, do, do. And then we're gonna say the upper limit, this should be a T, the upper lime. What are you talking about, lime? This is gonna be the middle point. And now we're gonna add the margin of error, adding some decimals. Do, 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 do. Okay, so there we have it. So now let's make our graph of this. I'm gonna select all of this. Let's make this blue bordered. And I'm gonna make this blue bordered over here. And this I'll just make bordered and keep it green. Okay, let's try to do this one a little bit different this time. I'm gonna select this item and say, we wanna format paint that over here. Now before I've been saying, hey, look, if we wanna make the graph, I wanna see how big of an, an X we need to make it. And I calculated the X's uh, for standard deviations out. Let's this time start with just those, like the Z, which would be four standard deviations out. So I'm gonna start at negative four and then negative 3.99. I'll select those two, add some decimals. I'm gonna copy that down until I get to a positive four. So I'm gonna go from negative four to positive four in terms of standard deviations, which should grasp or include the vast majority of any data under a normal distribution curve. So I'll try to get this down exact to right there. Okay, let's bring that back up. So that's gonna be the Z. And then I could say, okay, now how could I calculate then the X? This will be equal to the middle point, which is gonna be in essence our mean or P in the case of a binomial distribution. And we're gonna to add to that this negative number, which is basically four standard deviations times the standard deviation amount, which is in essence our standard error when building this bell curve. I need to make everything except this number absolute so I can copy it down. Therefore, F4 on the keyboard for this one, 
F4 on the keyboard for this one, dollar sign before the letter and the number, enter, and then I'm gonna go ahead and copy that down. So we copied it down. Let's add uh, some decimals to it so we can recognize, maybe add a few more decimals. All right, so if that is gonna be X, then we can calculate P of X. And so let's do that. And so we're gonna, this is gonna be our norm equals norm dot dist. And we're gonna be taking our X here, comma, the mean is the middle point. That's gonna be this one in percent for the P. I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard so I can copy it down, comma, the standard deviation. We want our standard error because that's the standard deviation used to make our bell curve. F4 on the keyboard so I can copy it down, comma, cumulative, no, therefore zero, and enter. Put on my cursor back on it, percentify to recognize, add some decimals, copy it down, and boom, uh, there we have it. So let, that's gonna be that. And so I'm gonna say, let's just control shift down. Looks like we've got everything in there. So let's make this a header. I'm gonna go font group, make that black, white center. Let's graph this column out now. So I'm gonna say control shift down, control backspace, and then we'll go into the insert. We could do this graph, a bar graph, a line graph, but we're gonna do an area graph. Selecting this one, we're gonna go to all charts and we want the area and we'll select the area items pulling that then to the right all right and then we're gonna say all right let's take off the header here i need to adjust the bottom bit now i would like to see both x's and z's down here but let's do it one at a time selecting the data i'm going to select this side and i want to be choosing first the, hold on a sec, did I get the right bit? Yeah, there's the data, so this side, and then I first want the X's. So I'm gonna say Control Shift down, Control Backspace, it's not showing up yet, so I'm gonna click here, back on it, there it is, there it showed up. So now we have the X's down here in terms of the X's, and then I would like to add the Z's, but to do that, I need another set of data. So I'm gonna add another set of data, which is gonna be our range. I'm gonna add a dynamic header of this range, which is gonna look like this equals, and I'm gonna say that I want this bottom bit is gonna be less than X, which is gonna be less than this top bit. And to make that into a formula, I have to put quotes around here for a text formula from here to here, and I need an and, to tie it together or else Excel gets mad. That's just how it goes. Now that's not gonna be perfect because now it's too much decimals. Going back into it, just gonna round it out. Round it out, put a round in front of this one, go behind it and then say that needs to be two decimals. Let's go two decimals out, close it up. I'll round this one, going in front of that one. Round tab, going behind it, comma, two decimals, por favor, if you please and enter there we go let's make that a little larger and let's make that black and white black white will center it now we'll actually do that with a calculation here we're going to use an if function equals if and then tab there's two conditions i'm going to embed an and for those two conditions tab what's the conditions we want this x right here has to be uh, it has to be greater than the lower number that's going to keep on changing that one down there and comma this X right here also has to be uh, wait a sec it has to be greater than this X has to be greater than that lower number and the X has to be lower than the upper number hopefully I got that correct and then close that up that's the and part of the function those are the two conditions comma what do you want us to do if that's the case? Then give us the percent and then comma. And it's like, well, what do you want us to do? Like, if that's not true, then I want you to leave it blank, which we do by quote space quote, because it's a text field. Now to copy this down though, everything that has a P, I need to make absolute. So that means this one right here, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter and the number, dollar sign before the letter and the number, F4 on the keyboard, enter doesn't show anything, but I'm gonna think it's true and percentify, add some decimals, then copy it down and check it. Page down, page down, page down, page down, 
there it is it looks like it's adding stuff in the middle so i think it's doing basically what we want so let's go back on up and let's add that to our data here so so i'm going to go back into here and say let's go into our design data and let's say that i want to add this data we're just going to add it and then this is the name of it and then i'll delete this bit and then select this range control shift down control backspace and then click here till it shows up because i can see it showing up there now and i'm going to say okay okay so now if i go back on up there it is in the middle now i still want to add my add this z down here so i'm going to double click on this one secondary axis it tries to add one to the right that's where not where i want it excel i want the bottom bit secondary to get rid of that one and then so I'm going to add to this bottom one, this X's. So I'm going to change the X's for the second set of data to the Z's. Control shift down, control backspace. It's not showing up yet. So I'll hit that and hit it again. And then OK. And then OK. And then OK. So there it goes. It should be there now. So now if I check this out, wait a sec, it's not there. I have not done yet. I have to hit the plus button and say axes. I want to have a secondary horizontal then it puts it on top which is not where i want it so i have to select it and say labels put it on the bottom excel you should know this by now you need to learn you need some ai it didn't do it because there's too much data if i click around it'll do it all right so there it is so now uh <clears throat> if i go here and then we can say let's check this out putting a line in the middle a line in the middle i see three of them out there just hit the one in the middle that's what rocky's coach says good advice what rocky won after he got that advice just hit the one in the so in any case that's going to be 20 uh the middle point so is that what we have here so we have uh 0.2 middle point now i'm not so concerned with the percents being wacky i could try to adjust the percents you know so it adds up to like 100 but i'm really just mainly thinking about the axes here to represent imagining the whole curve is representing 100 percent and hoping that i've got these kind of tails correct for me to envision what is going on here so here's the middle bit and then and and if i and then if i go out to uh and obviously in terms of z's that would be like zero down here and then if I go on the tails, the tails keep changing, but it should be lower at about 18 to 23 in terms of X's. So in terms of X's, it's about 18 to about 23. And in terms of Z's, we said it was uh, a standard, uh, an upper Z of 1.96 around two because we went 95 percent in the middle so in terms of z's about 1.96 here and in terms of z's about 1.96 so i think that new method kind of works to do that and that it's actually a little bit easier to kind of this using this method as opposed to what we did before which is to find the range in x's in some ways can be a little bit easier because if you have changing data because now i don't need to have a range in x's that keep on keeps on changing uh, this way so you can play with that by first making the z's and then the x's and then do the p of x and you end up with maybe a more detailed graph oftentimes that in that way because now you've got the z's going in terms of 0.01 count from negative four all the way up to positive four uh, it's going to make your percentages a little bit wacky it's not going to add up to like the 100 percent that way which is something i was kind of obsessing on before but I don't think that's uh that's fine i get you know to, for, depending on what you're doing here so this is actually gives you a more detailed graph let's make that uh like that i should probably spell check it but that's it bottom line uh the streaming platforms uh if we had a legit survey i think are underperforming and uh and crunchy roll uh is is the anime stepping up hollywood doesn't they, they still don't know what a woman is but the crunchy roll they the anime seems to know which parts of the anatomy to to to
to emphasize in order to not confuse their viewers properly. They know what, anyway. 